I'm Dr. Jess Mason, and we're going to show you how to do a lumbar puncture. You want to position your patient either in lateral recumbent or, as shown here, sitting upright. This patient prefers to sit upright. Now, either way, you want to have them arch their back and flex at the hip, and that's going to increase the distance between the spinous processes so your needle can more easily fit through. If they're sitting up, you can have them rest their feet on a stool, and then they can rest their head and their arms maybe on a table in front of them. Now, you can also consider giving them a little bit of benzodiazepine to help them through the procedure. Let's take a look at the real procedure done by Dr. Jordan Harp. Whether the patient is upright or lateral recumbent like this patient, identify the landmarks by palpating the posterior superior iliac crest, and where they meet in the midline should be L4, which is good. That's below the termination of the spinal cord, and we don't want to poke the spinal cord, so place a mark at this level. Clean the skin with antiseptic solution, and drape the patient to give yourself a sterile field. Anesthetize the skin with a wheel and then the subcutaneous tissue in the tract that you're planning to pass the needle, and we hope we're right, we know we may have to redirect. While that anesthetic is taking effect, you can get ready, set your tubes up, and your manometer if you're going to check an opening pressure. To set up the manometer, take the two pieces of tubing and connect them, that way you can measure pressures greater than 36 centimeters of water. Now we're going to get the three-way stopcock and connect it here and your spinal needle will connect right here. Make sure the three-way stopcock is open to the spinal needle and to the manometer so the fluid column can rise up the manometer. Once you're done measuring your pressure, you're going to turn that three-way stopcock so you collect the fluid from the column into your collection tube. Spinal needles come with a stylet in place. The bevel should be oriented longitudinally with the dural fibers, so if the patient is lateral, the bevel is up. And if the patient is upright, the bevel is to the side. Try to stay midline and imagine that you're aiming right towards the umbilicus or the umbilicus or the belly button. Your needle has to penetrate the supraspinous ligament, which connects the spinous processes and the ligamentum flavum, which connects the lamina of the adjacent vertebrae. So in theory, two pops. In an average size patient, that needle is going to be inserted about three quarters of the way. It might be a little farther than you think. Now, it's important as you advance the needle that you're checking frequently if you're in the spinal fluid because you won't always feel that pop through the ligaments. So remove the stylet and check for spinal fluid and then advance it a little further. And then remove the stylet and check for spinal fluid and then advance it a little further. Remove the stylet. Now, if you're still not getting spinal fluid after a few tries, you can remove the needle or you can pull it out just to the subcutaneous tissue, repalpate for your landmarks, and insert the needle again when you change angles just a little bit. Insert. And it looks like we're in right here. So I'm going to ask an assistant, Dr. Whitney Johnson, to come help me out at this point. If you wouldn't mind getting the manometer, and we will set this up right here. Would you hold the top for me? And you can see the fluid column starting to rise up the manometer to give us a pressure. Once we have our pressure measurement, we're now going to collect the spinal fluid from the manometer into our collection tube. So you turn the stopcock to open it up. And once it's drained out from the manometer, you can remove the manometer altogether and continue collecting your spinal fluid. This LP was pretty difficult, and we ended up having to sit him upright to get spinal fluid. Normal CSF is clear. Try to collect a few milliliters of spinal fluid in each tube for testing, and remember, don't aspirate spinal fluid. Replace the stylet before removing the needle, and that's it, folks. That's an LP.